chilling these smells. And parents speaking for the first time today about the charges they have been waiting more than a year for. Former Chandler mom Lori Vallow is now charged with the murders of her two children, JJ and Tylee. She and her husband Chad Daybell called to court today. He is also charged with murdering the kids and his first wife. We're record here in Fremont County. Good morning to everybody. It is May 26, 2021. Case number CR 2221-1623. State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell. Present here on the Zoom call, I have Mr. Daybell appearing with his counsel, Mr. Pryor. I have Mr. Wood, who represents the state. Also, Ms. Blake, who is here representing the state. I have a court reporter and someone from the Idaho Supreme Court for technical issues. Uh, this is the date and time for an initial appearance. Mr. Daybell, can you hear me okay? Yes. Can you hear me? I need me? you to speak a little bit louder, Mr. Daybell. Yes, I can hear you. Mr. Daybell, uh, the purpose of today's initial appearance is to go through your rights to talk about the date for future hearings, to talk about counsel, uh, and a few other things. Mr. Daybell, would you uh, review a copy of the notification of rights form that was sent down to the jail prior to this hearing today? Yes. Do you understand your legal rights here today? I do. Mr. Pryor, did you go through that notification of rights form with your client? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Daybell, did you receive a copy of the indictment that was filed on May 25th, 2021, a warrant that was filed on that same date? Yes, I did. Did you have a chance to review that with your counsel, Mr. Pryor? He did, Judge, and we have no questions at this time. Mr. Pryor, uh, it's my understanding from a review of the notification of rights that your client is waiving a formal reading of the indictment. If it's okay with you, I'll just go through each charge and the maximum penalties. I'm not gonna go through the allegation contained in the charge. That's appropriate, Your Honor. Ms. Blake or Mr. Wood, any objection to that? No, Your Honor, I think that's appropriate. No objection. All right. Mr. Daybell, the indictment, uh, like I said, is case number CR 2221-1623. It was filed on May 25th, 2021. In the indictment, there are nine counts. I'm gonna go through the counts that are relevant to your case. The first count is conspiracy to commit first degree murder, uh, as well as grand theft by deception. That count is punishable to the same extent as the underlying crime on the conspiracy. On uh, the first part of that count, murder in the first degree, it's punishable by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years. It carries up to a $50,000 fine or both. It also carries with it up to a $5,000 fine and restitution. With regards to the second part of count one, conspiracy to commit grand theft by deception, that portion of the charge carries up to 14 years in prison, up to a $5,000 fine or both. <clears throat> count one is an allegation of uh, like I said, conspiracy to commit first degree murder and grand theft. The murder relates to the victim and the death of TR, a minor. Count two is a charge of first degree murder. Uh, it carries with it a maximum penalty punishable by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years. It carries up to a $50,000 fine and up to a $5,000 fine and restitution. It relates to the death of the minor child, TR. Count three is a charge of conspiracy to commit first degree murder and grand theft by deception. That charge carries with it the same maximum penalty as count one. In other words, it's punishable by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years, a $50,000 fine and or up to a $5,000 fine and restitution. The second portion of that charge is uh, conspiracy 
to commit grand theft by deception. That portion of the charge carries up to 14 years in the state penitentiary, up to a $5,000 fine or both. That count uh, relates to the death of the minor child, JV. Count four is a charge of first degree murder. That charge is punishable by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years, a $50,000 fine plus $5,000 fine and restitution. That count relates to the death of JV, a minor. Count five is conspiracy to commit first degree murder. That charge uh, carries with it the potential penalty of death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years, a $50,000 fine plus $5,000 fine and restitution. That charge relates to the death of Tamara Daybell. Count six is a charge of first degree murder. That charge carries with it punishment by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years, carries up to a $50,000 fine and a $5,000 fine and restitution. The next count related to your case is count eight. It's an allegation of insurance fraud. Insurance fraud as it is charged carries up to 15 years in the state penitentiary, a fine of up to $15,000 plus restitution. Count nine is the last count. It is also a charge of insurance fraud. It carries up to 15 years in the state penitentiary, a fine of up to $15,000 for both plus restitution. Mr. Daybell, uh, the maximum penalties of all of those counts carry up to, uh, they, they could all run consecutively one after the other or they could run concurrently. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Mr. Pryor, have, have you had a chance to explain that to your client? Yes, Your Honor, I have. We'll proceed then very well. Mr. Daybell, you're appearing here today with Mr. Pryor. Do you wish to represent yourself? Do you wish to hire an attorney, Mr. Pryor? Or would you like to seek application of a public defender? Judge, Mr. Daybell has retained my office to continue representing him in this matter, and that's the way I anticipate going forward, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Daybell, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. All right, uh, the next item of business is to set the arraignment. That arraignment will be in front of the district court judge. As of right now, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Wood, Ms. Blake, the court has available June the 9th in the morning. That's the date we will set that arraignment for. Uh, it's yet to be determined if that's going to be in person or via Zoom. That will be worked out at a later time and date. Also, the exact time of that uh, arraignment on June 9th will be set by the court and we'll send out final notice of that, but it will be in the morning on June the 9th. Does that work for everybody? That will work for the state, Your Honor. Yes, Judge. The plan on that. Uh, right now, the uh, the warrant has set forth uh, no bail. Uh, Mr. Pryor, does that need to be addressed here today? No, Judge. Right. Is there anything else we need to take up here today at this initial appearance, Mr. Wood or Ms. Blake? Not from the state, Your Honor. Thank you. Not from the state, Your Honor. Mr. Pryor, anything else from the defense we need to bring up here today at this initial appearance? Nothing further, Your Honor. Maybe, may we be excused? You may. Thanks, everybody, for appearing. We will be adjourned on this matter. We'll be on the record here in Fremont County. It is 1144 here on the 26th of May, 2021. Good morning to everybody. We will um, call up case number CR 2221-1624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. Miss uh, Vala, Miss Daybell is present here with her attorney, Mr. Means. I have Miss Blake, um, I have Miss Smith, and Mr. Wood appearing here for the state. Uh, this is the date and time for an initial appearance. The court took a recess prior to the hearing today and uh, had a sidebar with counsel in chambers. Uh, based upon the information that was provided to the court, the court finds that there's some exigent circumstances as well as uh, a motion was made orally to me to continue the initial appearance by the defense um, to a future time. Uh, a date certain has not yet been set. Uh, what is the state's
position with regards to the motion made by defense to continue this initial appearance? Your Honor, the state objects to the motion to continue. Mr. Means, uh, it is your desire to seek a motion for continuance, correct? Correct, Your Honor. I couldn't hear you. We speak a little bit louder? Correct, Your Honor. Thank you. Based upon the information that was provided to the court, the court is going to continue this initial appearance uh, based upon the information that was provided to me, and we will set this for a time and date certain in the future. For right now, we don't know that date and time, but uh, we'll get that set as soon as is feasible. Any questions about uh, what's going to happen here today, Mr. Wood? No, Your Honor. Mr. Means? No, Your Honor. We'll proceed from there. Thanks, everybody. for Your appearing. Honor, we, we would quickly ask if Mr. Means has entered a notice of appearance on this case. Mr. Means, is it your intent to represent Ms. Daybell here in this case? It is, Your Honor. Do you plan on entering a notice of appearance to, uh, I guess, just to, to memorialize that? As soon as I get an opportunity, I will, Your Honor. Any other questions, Mr. Wood? No, Your Honor. Okay, that will be all for today. Thanks, everybody, for appearing. I, be everything, just, it's like the world just stopped, and, and it's like, okay, this is what we've been wanting to hear all this time, and... But yet, I couldn't tell you what the charges were once he walked out of the room. Yeah, JJ's grandparents say this has been a roller coaster of emotions. On one hand, yesterday was JJ's, or it would have been JJ's ninth birthday, and of course they say it's hard without him here. On the other hand, they say they're thrilled to finally see some charges come down. And you can almost take a, a, a breath, and you know now it's real. Kay and Larry Woodcock have said for the last year and a half, they're in a marathon. They were the ones who sounded the alarm after not hearing from their grandson, seven-year-old JJ, for months. His mother, Lori Vallow, started ignoring the request to talk to him. At the time, they didn't even know she moved from Arizona to Idaho. After issuing a welfare check, Lori lied to police and then moved to Hawaii with her new husband, Chad Daybell. That's according to court documents. All of this sparked a massive investigation that gripped the nation. And it ultimately led to JJ and his sister Tylee's bodies being found buried in Chad's backyard in Idaho. I think it's time for one of them to start singing like a, a canary. Now, almost a year after the bodies were found, a grand jury indicted Lori and Chad on conspiracy and first-degree murder charges. Every little major step <clears throat> has meant something positive. But I think yesterday was that significant step forward where the grand jury has spoken. Chad and Lori both briefly appeared in front of a judge this morning, but Lori's initial appearance got pushed back to a future date. Based upon the information that was provided to the court, the court is going to continue this initial appearance uh, based upon the information that was provided to me, and um, we will set this for a time and date certain in the future. Still, Kay and Larry say they're ready to continue on this marathon, as there is still a lot to learn. I've said from the beginning that there's more people involved in this than just Chad and just Lori, by far. And, and if you're going to convict those two, then there's other people that need to be brought to account. Now, Kay and Larry say next on their radar is Chandler, Arizona. That's where Charles Vallow, that's Kay's brother and Lori's previous husband, that's where he was shot and killed right before the kids disappeared. Did you hear that? There was a scuffle earlier between my sister and my niece. I'm going to replay that for you guys. Let me make sure this is all the way up. Okay, so there was a scuffle earlier 
with my sister and my niece. My niece got involved. Not earlier, me. Did you all hear that? Everybody was talking about the scuffle between the ex-husband and the brother. And I remembered that I heard that Tally came at him with a bat initially. Well, looks to me like there was a scuffle between Lori and her daughter. Okay, so he showed up in the house with a bat in his hand. Okay, so there was a scuffle earlier my niece, my niece got involved. Not earlier, meaning earlier this week, or earlier no, no, this morning. This morning, before they left. Before your your wife left. My sister. Before your sister left. Yeah. Okay. Who lives here with you? Nobody. I don't live here. My sister lives here, and my niece lives here. And you're yeah. just visiting? I was visiting for the night. Okay, so you're over here visiting your sister and yeah. your niece. Yeah. Okay, and there was a tussle between your sister and her husband. Yes. <laughs> Does the husband live here or no? No. Okay. Okay, is he an ex-husband or just current husband? Uh, they're working on that. Gotcha. So at some point earlier today, they get into a some type of domestic? Yeah, just this morning, then they left, and then he came to me. If they left, meaning who? Both my, of parties? My, or? Yeah, my sister took my niece and my nephew. Okay, so they left. The my sister niece, took nephew, the niece and the nephew. Okay, but did he leave also? No. He stayed here. Oh, yeah, the cop so totally the missed that. Clean or what? Who are you? Who are you? No, no, just go back. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you.